I'm going to start off by doing a reading from Wolf Light. Chapter One. My name is Zula, the name my father gave me an hour before I was born. On that day, as I journeyed into the world, past saw the light of the evening star in the sky. The planet Venus was turning to play with Jupiter and struck by her brilliance, past stood and stared. He's a healer, a shaman with an intuition so mighty he navigates pathways between this realm and another glazed with stardust and spirit. Entranced, goosebumps pimpling his arms, Pa decided I would be called Zula. Along with my name came an awakening confirmed by Venus's smile that night. From the beginning, Pa believed that my sisters and I were destined to shape the world. I would be one of three, a pride of sisters, born in different hemispheres, in forest, desert and by water. Together, we would dance with creation and replenish it. The first time he told me the story of my birth, Pa described the scene as if he could still see it. The sun setting over snow-capped peaks burned the Altai mountains gold. The foothills beneath glowed, so much so that a flat stretch of scrubland in front of it shone. Even the air seemed to sparkle, Pa said. Without a horse's breath of wind, the world stood still and glimmered like kindling. Grasses, bushes, trees, all of it, from the faraway mountains to our homestead. That summer, we were camped beside a lake, Zula. At the water's edge, our horses and camels were grazing. In wolf light, water that flickers blue in the day takes on a haunted purple hue. Dogs feel the heat of hang fangs in their teeth and cows butting like bulls recall the maul of horns on their heads. That's when you burst into our lives, my daughter. I was born after the big winter thaw at the start of the grazing season. Mongolia, my home, is a land of mountains, lakes and sky, an ocean of sky. We're nomads, often on the move in search of pasture for our animals. It was into this world that I emerged blue-eyed, a silver curl on my forehead. After I took my first breath, Pa claimed that instead of crying, I sang a desert song, a piercing note that I held for so long that my grandmother, fearing I was a spirit child and my first breath would be my last, slapped me. You know your grandmother, Pa said. I nodded. Grandma, Pa's mother, the leader of Pa's circle, is not the easiest of women to be around. At times, her tongue can be as sharp as the bite of a sabre-toothed tiger, and yet she guides me nonetheless. Within six weeks, though the coil on my head remained silver, the colour of my eyes shifted from blue to grey, pale grey, like the fur of a wolf in winter. My winter wolf, Grandma called me. More convinced than ever that my time on earth would be precious, she swaddled me and held me close while Ma went back to her chores. Grandma petted me, fed me bone broth to build me up and anchor me to Mother Earth. She rubbed herbs on my scalp to encourage my hair to grow. She smeared ointments and lotions, whispered magic words on my crown. And when at last my hair emerged, it dazzled like lightning in snow. As I grew older, capable of placing one foot in front of the other, Grandma taught me language and told me tales of the great Khan who forged our nation and launched the Mongol Empire. Tales of the mighty souls he wielded, scimitars, sabres, Mongolian ills, swords as powerful as Grandma's spirit. To bind me to her craft, she held me transfixed with fables of night and day creatures that dwell on the steppes. Then, a twinkle in her eyes, she spoke of their companions, women warriors, archers, on horseback, nomads like us. Between them, Grandma and Pa saw the framework of a picture my mother was unable to see. They saw and heard, and what they understood, they passed on to me. 
Of the three of our sisters, I, the firstborn, was the leader. The heartwood that would bind us was that each of us would have a teacher and a mentor to help us excel in our craft, and each of us a special place to take care of. In my case, we were on our annual journey from our summer grazing grounds to the outskirts of the town where we winter when I saw mine, a range of mountains shaped like a giant in hibernation. I froze, for there he was, stretched on the horizon, his body carved in the peaks and craters ahead of us. Pa, can you see what I see? I asked. Age seven, I was on horseback with my father, Perched in front, I sheltered in his arms. What do you see, my daughter? There's a giant fast asleep in those rocks over there, I pointed. There's his head and his arms. One day, I'm going to wake him up, Pa. My father laughed. Clever girl. I didn't register him until I was twice your age. I couldn't see the giant even when your grandmother told me to look out for it. My brother Batu saw him first. How could you not see it, Pa? With a finger, I traced the turban on the giant's head and on his feet, boots a thousand times bigger than those worn by the great Khan. You see now, don't you? Pa reined in his horse, a white stallion he called Taki. Indeed, I do, he replied. He dropped me to the ground, jumped down, and taking my hand, said as we strolled towards the mountains, Now that you've seen him, Zula, if I were to ask you, would you be willing to watch over him? I gazed at my father's face, a face flushed by wind and sun. Well, Zula? I hesitated, looked at the sleeping giant, and then back at my father. His head, covered in a fur hat, tilted as his eyes posed the question a second time. I am a shaman's daughter, attuned to the spinning of cobwebs and the secrets of murmuring hearts. I am my father's treasure, even though grandma's constant refrain is, tread carefully on the course we've set you on, Zula. A shaman's journey is dangerous. Some of us lose our way in the realm of spirits and fail to find a place in this one, like my son Batu. He fled to the city instead. I shushed Grandma's whisper. This wasn't like being told to look after my brothers or milk our animals and gut fish with my mother. This was special. I looked, nodded, and felt the stirring of an emotion I was able to taste but didn't understand. Drops of honey laced with horse's milk drizzled in my mouth. My heart tingled. It'll take commitment, said Pa. Will it be forever? Would you like that? Yes, I replied. The big man up there needs someone to look after him, same as you do, Pa. Well said, my daughter. But are you willing to spend hours alone with him to assure him he's remembered? Are you prepared to be an apprentice and learn our craft? I nodded a second time. Very well, said Pa. From now until your services are no longer needed, you will be the guardian of the sleeping giant of the mountains.